Welcome, Internet, to the 18th episode of the Pixel Play Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Kalen, a.k.a. Catastrophe, joined, as always, by my co-host, Adam, CS Radical. This is your weekly uh, podcast where we get together to talk about everything we love, hate about the video game industry and the hobby that surrounds it. In this week's episode, we're going to be talking a little bit about um, what we've been playing, kind of going over some of our games. I think we're both really excited about what we've been uh, playing, and so I think we're eager to share about that. We're going to be talking about Ubisoft changing its strategy to focus more on free-to-play games, and we're going to be talking about Sony announcing that they are working on 25 new games, some of them including new IP. All that more in this week's episode, but first I need to ask, Adam, how are you doing this sunny day? It's warm. It is. I love it. I love it. Do you? For now. Oh, okay. Yeah. I see. I turned on my air conditioner two days ago. I don't have any. Oh no, I, 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 I'm a fat guy, so I need the air conditioner. I, I just don't do It's well 26 the in the room right now, apparently, but I'm also a 140 pound skinny stick, so it, I'm good. I'm good for a little bit longer. See, I'm the opposite. I, I, I'm a big, I'm a big guy, so like me and summer just don't do well. So. If it if it hits 30 with humidity, well, no, we'll have a different story, but you know. Oh yeah. No, that's the, the humidity is really what does it here in Ontario. That's the brutal part. No, what are you talking about? We only have winter weather. It's only igloos here. Yeah. <laughs> no, honestly, uh, so like is, is summer like your favorite season? No, it would it would be spring. Spring and fall okay. like it's like the nice middle ground. Like I like the late end of spring, early end of fall because it's right at that point where it's like mid 20s, not too crazy on the humidity side. Like it's about right. It's it's comfortable. I can walk out with t-shirt and shorts cuz I fucking hate pants. Oh so. yeah, pants are the worst. Yeah, no. This, yeah. The first, right. there, there are three things that I do when I get home. One of them is take everything in my pockets and throw them on the counter. The second one is friggin' just wash my hands because God knows what the hell's happened over the last little thing. That's a pandemic edition. And then yeah. the third one is take off the fucking jeans because I hate jeans. I wish I didn't have to wear them. Yeah, honestly, I am short. I would wear shorts all year round if I could. And it's right now with the pandemic and working from home, it's been fantastic that I can. Yeah, you pretty much almost can. <laughs> yeah. No, for me, I'm, I'm, I love the cold. I love the winter. Like, and when I say winter, I don't mean like the gross like GTA. It's just cold and muddy. Like, yeah, you're you're not you're not exactly okay with like getting snowed in to the point you can't open your door, and you're not really interested in like rolling around in slush. No, that's no. I'm the exact opposite. I love that. You know, give me five feet of snow, bury everything down in it. Like okay, well you might be you, that, you can move up north where everybody else is and go well, enjoy it up I'm there. From. Go to go I, to like, Winnipeg. I'm from, Georgian, I'm from Georgian Bay, so like for us, it was like yeah, we got like three to five feet of snow, and it was like yeah, that was just normal for us um and so yeah i just i find that if you have like fresh snow it's like the best summer to me is overrated like i mean don't get me wrong there's good parts about summer but in my opinion summer's overrated i've always looked at it that i hate winter because it takes way too long to warm back up whereas with summer i could just dunk my head in a pool and i'm good see that's if you have a pool or a friend with a pool you see the thing with winter is i could put as many layers on i'm legally only allowed to take so many layers off no, nah, no, nah, there's not enough layers that I can put on me without me being a mobile and a warm. That's just, it just doesn't happen. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I know. Um, but yeah, no, it's been it's been nice, but I've definitely been needing to uh, to to uh, throw the air conditioner on. So now I am sitting in my basement and it's a nice frigid temperature. So, so you would say that because it's hot outside, it's it's a good uh, it's a good place for a bunch of hot takes on the show today exactly if yeah. only Come there here. was news to talk about though this week right oh my god it has been so dead this week in terms of content uh i mean we're gonna we're gonna we got some stuff to talk about but it's not anything groundbreaking or revolutionary um yeah, yeah. When, when the top story on the game subreddit right now is that disco elysium just got unbanned in australia i'm like oh that's a bad sign there's yeah, not it, a lot to talk about is there it's crickets sony did announce the, those new controllers did you see them yes i did yeah yeah so which one do you like the red or the black uh i i like the one that has color yeah so the red yeah one. so so my question is are these the colors that you wanted or would you have wanted something different i mean i don't know what i want because here's the thing i might say i want a blue controller but what if they use the wrong shade of blue right or what if the blue yeah. is in a weird spot like i can say what i think i want but I didn't know I'd want this one, which is a blue. I didn't know I'd want this one, which was a gold one. Uh, there's a couple over there that I put some like Destiny 2 stickers on because they're they're ice white, so I want to do something with them. But like, hmm. I really don't like. There are colors that I don't think I want. Like, I don't want brown. 
I don't want yeah. camouflage because I'm not 16 playing Call of Duty every day. <laughs> but like, yeah. you give me red and you give me black and I'll be like, they look fine. Although I'll say the black one looks really boring as shit because it just looks like nothing. See, it's funny because if you had asked me when they launched the PlayStation, like what color I would have wanted. And if I could have chosen from the beginning, I, I thought I wanted a black one. I like I wanted to stay with that black, you know, classic look controller. But yeah, it, it's it doesn't it doesn't capture me. And I think the problem is that the the face buttons, I'm really missing the colors on the face buttons. And I know that's a stupid, like very small thing to complain. about. Yeah, but, but I, it's I, weird that they haven't done it. Yeah, like, even even on the on the normal controller right now, like I look at it and don't get me wrong. I love this controller. Mm-hmm. But really, like what's stopping you from just putting a little bit of color on these buttons? Like it doesn't have to and be it, the entire button. This isn't an Xbox controller. But, but I don't understand too. why you can't just have a little green outline on the triangle. Like what's stopping you? Especially because like those symbols and those, those colors are so iconic. I, I think having. <laughs> well, I mean, I think you're like, wearing the shirt, aren't you? I, I am. You can't see it on camera, but yeah, right there. Like the colors are right there. Yeah. And, and so I think like it's kind of weird that they're not using them. And I think with especially with the white and with the black, I think those colors would definitely really pop. I can see for like a red, like having all those colors be red. I think that would look really sharp as well. But yeah, I, I'm finding the monotone or like the not monotone, but. Bitone. Is that the term? I don't know. But having just like that one, like two color contrast, it's cool, but I feel like it's missing the colors now. So I thought I would want the black. Obviously, of the two, I like the red. It's a little bit more of like pink or like it's magenta. The thing I'm looking, it's a little bit pink for a bit, but like it's so cool. like, it, you know it what it needs? Nice. It needs the black to be a little bit of a darker shade of blue. So it's almost like a Spider-Man controller. Yeah. Now, you see, I, I would have thought that the first color that PlayStation would have come out with would have been like blue. Because, I mean, I don't know about you, but like I associate blue as like a PlayStation color. I mean, color, it is the color, a, yeah. Yeah, so you'd think that they'd have like a PlayStation blue controller. Well, they had to do black because enough people wouldn't stop bitching about it. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I think, I think like, I don't know, I'm assuming for the majority of people, red's their favorite color. Mm-hmm. So I guess that's the logic. Yeah, I mean, I fall into that camp. Red's my favorite color as well. But uh, I don't know. Do you think it's weird the timing that they're releasing it now like i mean i'm thinking about myself and like i think most people when they bought it they bought their consoles with a second controller Nah, not me but mind you i only play on my own and i i literally have this thing always plugged in so i don't even have to think about it but yeah i mean i don't care what time they do it they can do it now and they can come up with three more colors tomorrow i don't really care like if it's more options i'll take more options whenever we can get them you know yeah yeah i don't know i just i kind of feel like this might have been something that they should have had sooner well, we don't know what they were working on the pandemic or not, because they were trying to rush enough consoles out of the store to begin with. So, yeah, I guess I guess I'm just thinking, though, that either launch it like when the console comes out or launch it like a year later. I think doing it now is just kind of like a weird spot because we've all just bought second controllers. Yeah, but, you know, there's enough people that would just get another one because they there's enough people out there that just do that. And there's enough people that will see the black one and be like, finally, and they buy seven of them because they yeah, for some reason. Yeah, that's a fair point. There's there's so. enough fanboys that it doesn't matter when they say it, they'll buy it. Yeah, but I mean, like, yeah, that's that's the week has been like that's one of the biggest stories of the week. So like, you can get an understanding of how slow it is. But I mean, slow slow news day is not going to slow us down. We uh, we've got lots of video games to be playing. Adam, I know you must have been over the moon last week. Right? About what? I don't know a certain game that you somehow have some. Oh, I thought I thought there for. was going to be a joke in there. No, no, no. I was legitimately just leading you into like, hey. Yeah, no, I'm really excited for that new Call of Duty Warzone DLC, though. I don't I don't even fucking know. I just assume there's probably something out there. <laughs> no, I yeah, finally... So Adam, you've been playing the new Mass Effect... Is it Legendary Edition? Is that what it's called? Yes. Is it re- the, yeah, the remaster, essentially. Yeah, I mean, I've only played like maybe six, seven, eight hours tops. I, I did mm-hmm. a couple of streams on Twitch for it because that's it's become my, my Twitch game now, so... Nice. It's it's interesting to to play through it now because I played through these games when they first came out and this is like 10 plus years ago now. So mm-hmm. coming at them with a much more uh, clear head and a much more attentive mind is a little bit interesting because now I'm paying attention to more of like tiny bits of lore on the side. Mm-hmm. Like immediately when you get brought into the main hub of the entire game where like all the races are mingling, there's like an office right outside with like a couple of pretty inconsequential like side races in the game. 
And like all of a sudden, I'm like just listening to the dialogue with them and be like, oh fuck, yeah, I remember this. I like, and you're putting all this stuff together now, and you're like, oh man, I actually like mm-hmm. these people more now. So it, it is it is interesting to look at it from a much different perspective now that I've had enough time away from it to kind of take a more of a critical eye with in some things, and then just make fun at so, make fun of so many other things at the same time too. There mm-hmm. there is a lot of stuff that will happen throughout the three games that I'm going to be sitting there being like, man. I can't, I can't take this seriously. This moment sucks. Like I, every time, like you start off the game there, like, cause look, I'm spoiling like what? Almost 15 year old game here. No, go for it. So there is a care. There is an NPC essentially that is in your squad. The first time you touch down and he gets lit up like a Christmas tree right at the very beginning and dies. Mm-hmm. So the second they give this guy any dialogue at the beginning of the game, the entire stream, I'm like, it's okay. He'll do fine this time. Everything will be fine. <laughs> and then you finally get to the cutscene where you know he's going to die. And you're like, come on, Jenkins. You can... Oh, yeah, Jenkins, you fucked up again. <laughs> you had a chance. You know, you think, well, it's a remaster. Maybe this time they'll make it... No, he fucking gets lit up. Doesn't matter. It's a twist. Jenkins is now the main character. Shepard dies. I mean, look, apparently Seven's taken some new liberties with their remake. So who knows, right? Yeah. So in terms of, like, the improvements, like... Walk me through, like graphically how does it look um control wise gameplay wise like what 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 do you like what are you concerned about and what is just kind of glad that you kept the same so far it is a mixed bag because the improvements that they've made have shown but it's also really buggy for some reason Mm. so here's a couple of weird things that's i'll start with the bad stuff right away because it's mostly minor shit but still Mm -hmm. um I don't know what it is, but every once in a while, the D-pad, and I tried, and I tested this in other games just to make sure that it wasn't just my controller. For some reason, once in a blue moon, the D-pad will double-click on you. And it's just a hmm. weird thing in that game, because I played other games and tested it. Doesn't happen anywhere else. And then the other weird thing is that some lines of dialogue so far when I've been playing the game just cut out like a half second before they're done. Okay. And it's not of me hitting the button to skip. It just stop, It just cuts out like a half second of audio. So like you you're here like somebody about to finish their set and then it stops like just like that. So oh. it's 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 a little strange, but it's it's not like breaking. It's just more like what oh that was weird. But for the most part, everything else is pretty good. Like the graphics look. I mean, I I haven't played Mass Effect One in forever, so I can't really remember how it looked, but it's it looks pretty damn good right now. The mm-hmm. controls they've changed. They've made the at least the. The camera and the combat system a little bit more like two. One still has its infinite ammo thing where it's just more like a laser where it just overheats and you got to wait till it cools down. Whereas in in the second and third game, they went more into the ammo stuff again. So there's a clip, which I didn't have a problem with either way. But it was more the fact that they've definitely made the shooting a little bit more like sticky. Like not like sticky in a bad way, but like it actually will get you to where you want it to go it's a lot more you're gonna feel a lot more fluent like you're hitting the things you want to hit Mm. uh other than that the driving sections i can't tell you whether or not they're any good because i don't know if they could fix that i i said on stream when i was doing it for the first time they could make this car five times faster and i think i'd still hate it because the maps are so devoid of life yeah because that's the problem they ran into i mean it was a very early game like most of the places you'll land on with that section they're barren there's nothing it's just mountains There's like three camps or three points of interest yeah there's not much there so there's Hmm. not really much they could do honestly if if they had a little more wherewithal they should have just said okay here's the mini map point the places you want to go to we'll take you there but there's hidden things on the map too so i guess they couldn't really get rid of all of it um but other than that, like what I've done so far has been perfectly fine. Like, actually, sorry, the, there's one thing I forgot that they improved on the driving section too. Unless it was never, it was always there, and I just never noticed. If they, it's if it's always been there, then I'm a dumbass. But if they added a zoom in, uh, for your cannon and for your machine gun on on the Mako, it is amazingly so much better. It makes shooting things from a distance actually like doable now. Yeah. Instead of just aiming in the general direction and just hoping it doesn't skirt by it. Now I feel like I actually can have some accuracy. So when I've been doing the driving sections, my aim is not remotely as bad as it used to be. Yeah, I don't. I can't recall whether they had it or not when I played it. Like I said, if they know, did, it was. I guess it's my ago. dumbass for not thinking to check if the left trigger did anything. But yeah. But no. Is there anything? Is there anything that you're looking at? And you're like, oh man, I wish they had you know improved or worked or tweaked this. 
at this point, I can't say because I'm not deep enough in to really notice any like massive flaws. Like it, it yeah. really just comes down to like all the problems that you would have had with it already that probably would need a remake to go through everything. Mm. Like the fact that all the armor you get, like I guess that's the one thing is I wish the armor wasn't random on what they gave you. Like all the chests mm. you open, they just it's just completely random. So mm-hmm. like it doesn't feel like there's a progression. It feels like you open a bunch of nothing and then hope that you get the one really good object. And it's yeah, kind so of strange in that way. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely be an annoying feature. Uh, at least you awesome. can sk- at least you can skip through the elevators though. That's nice. Now you don't have to. Yeah, sit I was there. gonna ask. Is the, is the loading time better now? Yes, but it's still very weird when you don't do it right away. Because I I wish that they would at least give them some better idle animations. Because it's still I'm gonna stand up for this. It's still yeah. weird seeing people just stand yeah. perfectly still like there's not like these guys are in the middle of like a battle trying to find like some person they need to save before it's too late and they are so fucking stoically standing in the elevator like nothing's wrong and like if they move an inch like it's going to explode yeah uh for audio listeners basically adam just stood up straight and like i, t- I asserted my his- dominance by by uh eye posing yeah pretty much i was gonna say just just shy of the t i was doing so. my best pixar eye impression okay there you go um, but awesome. So you're liking it. You're going to stick with it or are you kind of oh, just going to, are you going to, I'd, I'd be a really stick? bad fanboy if I didn't. So you're going to play all three. Oh, for sure. 100%. And you're playing on PS5. I'm assuming. Yes. Well, I mean, it's the PS4 yeah. game on PS5, but yes. yeah. Yeah. Are you going to platinum it or Pff, no, no. Oh, come on. I have one platinum in my repertoire and that was a game that I put thousands of hours in. So I better, which game was that that you platinum would have been destiny. Hmm. Guess you're not a true fan then. No. No, I'm not. Okay. I'm a, I'm a fan okay. that likes finishing games efficiently. <laughs> not not yeah. spending an extra 30 minutes in a game just because the game wants him to use a specific power he doesn't like. But you need that trophy. No, I don't. No, I do not, sir. Then how will people know that you actually play? Uh, because I actually know what I'm talking about when I talk about games. I guess that's Hashtag one Actually, I guess some fan. people would disagree with that because apparently I say things on the show I shouldn't, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Did you want to talk about that? You want to go into what you said or, or do you want to just leave All it All I'll say is I said what I said about Halo. And if you want to find out what that was, ladies and gentlemen, you can listen to last week's episode. Come at episode me, CS 17. Radical on Twitter. You got a problem. Yeah. Come at him. Yeah. Uh, and if you want to hear that is episode 17. Uh, I believe we called it Get Rich or Die Supplying. I mean, there is a there is a separate uh, YouTube video with just that section called Is Halo Infinite in Trouble? So you can also check, check that out it. on the Play or the Pixel Play podcast YouTube channel exactly check it out there ladies and gentlemen uh yeah i mean we got a little bit of problems because we were talking about how uh halo was in you know there was talk about it being in sort of development trouble with crunch time and stuff but i'm not going to get into that speaking of crunches and games that kind of came out bad i i want to talk about the game that i've been playing i've actually been diving into cyberpunk uh i think when we t- when we first started this show we were like talking about how cyberpunk was terrible and i had it i'd gotten it for christmas and I was on the fence about trying it. And I played it when it when I got it. So this is probably mid-January before the updates came out. And yeah, it was it was rough. Like it wasn't. Yeah, I'm not going to sticker code. It. it was rough. It was not really good. Um, I was playing it on the PS5 and I'm like, you know what? I love the aesthetic of Cyberpunk. So it, it kind of gets a benefit for me just in the fact that it is an aesthetic that we very rarely see in video games like that whole yeah for lack of a better term the whole cyberpunk genre aside from like deus ex and a couple other smaller indie games like um katana zero and stuff you don't see a lot of that cyberpunk kind of aesthetic and so i was really excited to play it um put it on the shelf waited for update 1.2 and now i think we're on like update 1.22 or something like that and i'm loving the game um i'm really happy I'm, i'm enjoying it i'm probably about 30 hours into it uh, and I've barely scratched the surface of the main campaign. I've just been going around doing side quests. Uh, I am literally playing the game as a cyberpunk, so very high, you know, hacking skills, running around with a pistol, just shooting everything. Uh, and it's great. I, I wouldn't say the game is 100% fixed. Um, there are still some times where, like, the game has crashed on occasion. It's probably crashing maybe every five to ten hours I'm getting a crash. I've maybe had six in total um but like usually it's right after it's saved so i haven't lost a lot of progress um graphically i mean it's not the prettiest game but i mean it looks like a it looks like a decent you know last gen game and so i find it's it's you know 
looks good for the most part. There's a couple parts where like things clip or I can't pick up items or something, but it hasn't been great game breaking yet. Uh, from the gameplay perspective, I'm I'm loving it. I find the hacking and the shooting like it all feels really good. Um, Story wise, I'm absolutely loving. It. Like I said, I'm I've barely scratched the surface of the main campaign, but I've just been doing side quests and you know trying to to pick up chicks in this cyber world, and it's honestly a blast. Um, so I mean, there if you look if you look at you can see it, it's it's a nice game with rough edges, and if you look for those rough edges, you can definitely find them. Um, but yeah, it's it's fantastic in terms of everything else that it does. And I, I think I think there is a really good game there. And I think it'll have a sim- situation similar to The Witcher um, in that I think in the long run, I think people will eventually come back around and say, like, this is a really good game, especially once it gets its next gen upgrades and, and all those benefits. There's an awesome game there that just unfortunately came out in an incomplete state. And I think that is At the going worst to... possible time too, when people desperately yeah. needed it. Yeah, I think honestly, if they had kept it until, you know, March, April and, and launched it now, I think it would have done much better. It, it also, no if, we, if we weren't in a pandemic year, like it would have still had its its detractors, mm-hmm. but it would have been moved on to quickly because there would have been so much more out there. Yeah, Like there would have been so many more games to talk about, but because so much has been pushed back, it really festered for a while, too. Yeah, it, it came out because it was like the last it was the last big launch. Um for a while like i don't like it came out and admittedly it kind of fell flat but it like it left a sour taste because there wasn't something to come and take its place and that was we had all kind of anticipated that cyberpunk was going to be the game we were playing and unfortunately it just failed it it had a failure to launch i mean in my case i'll know for sure when the next gen update comes out whenever that may be if it's this year if it's even if it's next year like it doesn't matter to me if it takes however long it takes it's fine like i'm gonna play it eventually i keep getting tempted because like i've seen the pc version go for like 30 bucks sometimes on sale and it's like ooh, yeah no nope, nope, i'm th- waiting like it's it's hard but that's why i like i, I let's just start this topic because i was on reddit and someone was like hey like they have this on sale and this is in the states for like 30 bucks like should i grab it and i would say 100 percent for for 30 bucks it's definitely a game worth picking up especially because you do get that free upgrade um later on in the year when that comes out so what i if think i like, wait longer what if i get it for 20 well, here's here's how I would kind of say is like if you are dying to play it, like if you were really excited for Cyberpunk and you were turned off or dissuaded by the fact that um, it didn't launch well, I'd say get it now. Like, I think it's it's a point now where you it is playable. It is a lot of fun to have it. It's more fun than it is frustrating. And like the rough edges and, and like the problems that it does have are minor compared to the fun that I'm having. Um if you have no interest, if you are completely against it, yeah, sure, wait for the next gen. And I think the next gen is definitely going to be better. But for me, I was too excited about the idea of playing in a, in a you know, post-apocalyptic, kind of post-apocalyptic cyberpunk kind of world. And for me, like, very rarely does that sort of thing come along. And for me, I wanted to play that. And to be honest, I am loving it. I'm enjoying it. It's basically whenever I have time, that's what I'm doing as I'm playing. I'm playing cyberpunk. And I, I like I said, I'm just enjoying living in that world. It's not even about the the main story. It's just that that world that they've built. That being said, I'm, I know I'm thinking like people are going to be like, oh, but like the world feels dead. Unfortunately, yeah, like the world is weirdly empty at times. But I don't know. The ideas that they had there were really cool. So like it doesn't feel like a Grand Theft Auto 5 in the sense of like, oh, it's a whole lived in world. Like there's really some quiet parts of the city that like it's weird that it's quiet, but there's also parts that do have some people. And so it's not. Once again, it's not completely. But again, we're also talking it's... about a version that probably shouldn't have been made in the first place because it seems like this game wasn't going to be very wasn't going to work with a previous gen console. Yeah, I, I'd be curious to kind of see what happened at CD Projekt Red to have this happen. But like, I imagine it was one of those things that they had unfortunately signed contracts and agreements, and like the fact that there's well, they a probably Xbox... intended it to be out for PS4. Mm-hmm. It was probably meant to be out on that at that point, And then it just took so long to develop that they were like, well, fuck, we might as well do it for the new consoles because it'll make a big splash. Well, I think that's I think the idea is I think in a different world, like they should have like they I think they announced it too early. That was the, that was the problem that they had. And so I think that if they had pivoted and said, yeah, we're going to make this a next gen console. But like if you remember, they had a situation where they had an Xbox um, console specifically like designed for. Um, Cyberpunk. And so you can't really make a cyberpunk edition Xbox. Yeah, but it was, an Xbox, it was an Xbox one though, right? Yeah. And that, yeah, that's the so same. Like that's what that. I mean is I think they intended to put it on that console 
It's just once they took longer in development than they thought, I think they realized, well, shit, now we definitely have to make it for next gen because that's going to be the expectation. See, so, yeah, I think and that's it might where everything went opposite. off the rails. See, I think it might have been something opposite where they were like, shit, this is not going to land on PS4 and Xbox Series or Xbox One. But we now have contractual obligations, especially with Microsoft, because they are making that cyberpunk Xbox Series Xbox One. And so they're now they their hands were tied that they had to release something like that. I think if they could have, they would have they would have just dropped it and just said, yeah, we're next gen and, you know, PC. I mean, if that was the case, and I'd say they're really stupid for signing a contract about getting a cyberpunk Xbox One made when they weren't even sure they would be able to make the game for it. Well, I, I imagine that the situation I'm not I'm, I'm coming across as very apologetic for them and I'm not trying to. But I think it's probably one of those that was that deal was probably inked long before they decided that this isn't well, well, working if, well. If they on... inked that deal long, long before, then you would also imagine, too, that logic would dictate that they probably intended this to be on that console because they figured yeah. that that was the pathway. I mean, yeah, maybe I'm it was sure just was... them grossly underestimating how hard it was going to be to to make something of that scale on there. Maybe it's also their fault for making essentially a PC heavy game for a console that wouldn't be able to handle it. So mm-hmm. there, there's a lot of things. I mean, either way, it was gross mismanagement on their part for thinking it was going to work. 100%. And I'm not trying to excuse that situation. Like it was a crappy situation that they were in. But going back to where I'm at, I would say it's it's fun. I'm loving it. It's it's not as bad as as it was when it first came out. And if you are interested in this, I would 100% recommend going to grab it. You, it's a win-win situation. Play it now. If it's hitting the boxes that you're looking for and you're you're enjoying it, great. If not, hold off and just you know wait for the next gen. You will get it with that you know PS um, when the PS5 and the Xbox Series X come out. I mean, even if um, you don't have the PS5, like even if you have, have exactly. it on PS4, like if you wait for the next gen update, you know it's going to be pretty well patched by then too. So. Mm -hmm. yeah so for me how i'm doing is i'm playing the main campaign on the base game on the ps5 and then one i'm not going to play the dlc that comes out until it's been updated for ps5 and that's how i'm going to experience this and i'll probably do a second corpo playthrough once once that ps5 version comes out but yeah so adam i i would recommend if you see it and you're interested go grab it nope i'm waiting for the update fantastic Fantastic. Glad I had an impact. I, I've, I've already told myself, no, wait until the update because you at least know that, you know, you're going to get what the game that they probably intended to release. So, For sure. Uh, speaking of upcoming games, um, probably one of the bigger stories that came out this week in, in what was typically what was actually a pretty dry week for, for news um, is Ubisoft announcing that it's got it's shifting its focus and is going to focus a little bit more on free to play games. Uh, So this comes from the Video Game Chronicle by Tom Ivan. Um, So he says, Ubisoft says it's changing its strategy to focus on more high-end free-to-play games. So I'll just give a quick excerpt here. Uh, The company provided an update on its game development strategy during its full-year earnings call on Tuesday, when it said it intends to be less reliant on AAA releases as part of its overall product mix. Uh, They quote, In line with the evolution of our high-quality lineup, that is increasingly diverse, we are moving on from our prior commitments regarding releasing three to four premium triple A's per year, said Ubisoft's chief financial officer, Frederick Duget, I'm going to assume. Um, the article later updated that Ubisoft has told the Video Game Chronicle its free-to-play push does not mean it will release less premium games. Uh, they go on to continue um, with the original article. It is no longer, and they quote, it is no longer a proper indication of our value creation dynamics. For example, our expectations for Just Dance and Riders Republic are consistent with some of the industry's AAA performers. Additionally, we are building high-end free-to-play games to be trending towards AAA ambitions over the long term, he added. This is purely a financial commitment evolution and does not uh, change the fact that we continue to expect high cadence of content delivery, including powerful premium and free to play new releases. Um, Yeah. So, Adam, what do you think of this strategy? What do you think the future of Ubisoft looks like? They can say whatever they want, but the reality is, is we know they're going to take some of their franchises and milk them for all it's worth. That's all it is. I'm I'm going to I'm going to sit here and be the asshole and just be like, no, they're they're going to be greedy. Like, let's be honest. Free to play is not a model that most companies use like responsibly there are very few warframes in the free-to-play zone see i think i think this is like so you're not thinking this is a good strategy for ubisoft oh it's a good strategy as a business yes 100 percent. i'm saying Mm -hmm. like from the from the gamer side no this leads to a lot of titles getting 
horribly milked and a lot of microtransaction ridden stuff that we're going to be dealing with which if it's free to play i guess you can make the excuse but still like it's always shady pra- shady practices with these games see because what i'm focusing on here um was where they said um it's a, no longer a proper indication of our value creation dynamics for example our expectation for just dance and riders republic are consistent with some of the industry's triple a platform um, platformers and so what i kind of think with that is what they're saying is i don't think we're going to see like assassin's creed become free to play or no but they'll you know, definitely make another ge- assassin's Creed game to use the license to try to print some extra money i mean sure but i mean those things are easily you know dismissed but i think you're going to still mm, have are those... they though i think so in what sense like why do you think they won't be ignored like able to be ignored because you got enough, especially with these major franchises, like if you throw, like, look, how many friggin' Tom Clancy games are out there and people still eat it up? How many Assassin's Creed games have come out and people are still eating them up? I think even with the yeah. quality as it is, you know, it. most people are not going to fall for it. But the problem is, is we have enough people that do because of how predatory those games tend to be is that we create a lot of these, these people that are going to be spending themselves into fucking debt over it. Look, I wouldn't. I have no problem with free to play games as a concept. The problem is, is that the way that they are implemented in like ninety nine percent of games is predatory, and that's all yeah. it is. So, like, I'm not. I'm not. I'm trying not to be an asshole, but I'm getting my guard up because I know what most of these games look like. See, the way I kind of read the article and what I'm hoping and what I think would be really good is that I find Ubisoft is a weird company in that they've got some awesome. You know, I love Ubisoft as a, as a developer and a publisher. You know splinter cell assassin's creed um you know far cry like they make fantastic triple a games but i think they also make some weird you know double a single a kind of games as well so you've got stuff like steep riders republic trials fusion um like those are all or i guess it's just trials um you've got those kind of games and those aren't the games that i'm gonna drop 40 50 60 bucks for but if you can get a situation where just dance is a free game and you can you know play a little bit here for free get into the system get into it and then they start microtransactioning and like hey you want more songs you want more dance moves like here you can pay more you can pay more if you want to do that same with like you know something like riders republic or steep where it's like hey you can have two or three hills and a snowboard or two go nuts and play for free but if you want you know more levels if you want more um if you want more like equipment like that's something that we can now charge and that's how you play it like i think that's that's a great way to get people into games that you know probably don't sell super well and i know just dance sells super well but i also i think they can make more money doing it this way like i think i think there is a sour taste in our mouth for free to play games and but you look at stuff like genshin impact that just came out like that one's doing really well I still um, think it's predatory too, but I mean, people seem to love it. So I guess they kind of look past it, right? I think that's the nature though of, of free to play. Like the free to play model is a certain level predatory, but I mean, I think it's just the way that like some of the stuff is going. Like if you think of like Spotify and, and all those, like they're, they're technically free as well and you're paying for the ad service. So like, yeah, but when you're, but when you're getting a free to play game, you're not just getting ads. Mm-hmm. no i know you're, that, you're getting just... you're getting all these like especially with loot boxes and stuff like that like mm-hmm. okay i'll straight up say it right now if we outlaw loot boxes i will never mm-hmm. have a problem with free-to-play games yeah honestly like i don't care if a package that comes with all this currency all these skins is like 25 dollars. i don't care because i don't have to get it but yeah. loot boxes are designed to be cheap and to and give you stuff that you really want and you no, never 100%. get them. So if we outlawed that, my stance on free-to-play games changes dramatically. Mm-hmm. It's just right now, I do not trust any developer to this day to implement a free-to-play game and not have some abhorrently predatory shit. Because I yeah. don't care what everybody says, like, oh, I don't buy them. That's fine. I don't either. But for every one of us, or for every 50 of us, there's one person who is now in debt because he couldn't stop himself from spending $3,000 in a month on something. And you can mm-hmm. sit there and say, like, I'm not saying you, Kaylin. I'm saying like people in general can say, well, that's their problem. They got to figure that shit out. We should also be trying to keep it so that that shit doesn't happen. Yeah, but I mean, like that, that argument comes in, down to a thing like, how do we control? Like, what do we do about the people who get into MMOs and they get to the point where they're not, you know, they're losing relationships or something like that because they're not, you know, controlling. Like, do we then 
do we then go for MMOs and say like we need to make it so you can only play a certain amount of time? Like, oh, we're, I'm not, not we're not. We're to, not uh, talking like time is is any, anybody's choice. We're talking money, which is things that literally keep us alive, mm-hmm. right? I, I I guess I'm I'm looking at this like I'm coming in with an optimistic view, and that I'm hoping that it's not predatory. And I mean. Very well. It well, could I mean, be. If, I'm hoping it isn't either. It's just the history that we have shows that they always are. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, can you think of? I'm trying to think of like what developers have gone free to play in a predatory sense. Well, and they don't. They don't have predator. to be intentionally predatory. The second you just add something like a loot box, just it makes it so, right? Yeah, I don't know though. Like, I like they have to be there in order to 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 justify like the expense and stuff what so, a loot box like, I'm no no not a loot box no no no, I, no like, not a loot box but like, like that, that's those... what i've said like it's mostly the loot box mechanic that's what really drives my my disdain for free to play because i play mm-hmm. a i play a bunch of them too like i'm playing final fantasy 15 or 14's free trial loving it mm-hmm. yeah and to my knowledge i don't think they have them so yeah it's just also I... Ubisoft is still not quite in the best light to me. So I also look at them with what they have done recently. Like you've played Valhalla, you know how much money they try to get you to spend in terms of boosters and things like that. Yeah. Like I I just, I don't trust them right now to do that. I think they'll do what we expect a lot of these companies to do, which is see how much they can milk. Yeah. But the the one issue, like going, going with that Valhalla thing, like those boosters are there, but those boosters don't, do anything in valhalla because the problem for me was not that i was you know not at a high enough level to do content it was just there was just too much content um i think the fact that they talk about this being like more free to play high end free to play like i think that kind of denotes that it won't be it's not gonna be like a mobile game kind of thing where you're just getting loot boxes i think i'd imagine they're gonna make it so it is a more premium experience and i think it'll change what we look at in terms of the free to play game. That's the hope. It's just I of all the companies right now, Ubisoft is not high on my list on companies that I would trust with it. That's all I'm saying, really. Like if this this would be a totally different conversation if Sony said, Hey, we're gonna start doing some more free to play stuff right now. See, I feel like Ubisoft is the one that's probably the I mean, yes, if Sony if Sony did it themselves, like that would be that would be great, but they're not going to. And I think like you've got two ends of the spectrum like you've got well your... i'm just saying hypothetically right like if yeah. sony straight up said they were going to do it i'd be like okay i'm a, I'm still worried but i at least give you guys a little bit more credit i don't have a trust with, with ubisoft right now personally so see i i think that i think ubisoft would be the best one because they're the best ones that would do it like you've got activision and ea who do it as well but they don't do it well i think ubisoft is the one that like has the ip has the kind of weird enough like mentality to do it but also the skill to do it well so i'm kind of hoping i can't that it works judge well. that yeah i don't know yeah, that's just my opinion but so yeah any any other thoughts on on ubisoft well i mean look like i'm play? not trying to be a debbie downer here i'm just you more are. you're bringing me like, down here buddy look like free to play for me is is a mixed bag it's always been a mixed bag like you walk into a free to play game it can either be like a sweet deal that you get a, a good chunk of hours out and it doesn't really demand much of you, or it's mm-hmm. one that you're just like, I can't do anything in this game. Like, mm-hmm. like the game is actively trying to get me to spend money. So when you have a relatively negative view of Ubisoft, and I will admit a lot of it is optically rather than in mm-hmm. what games they've made. So I just personally don't like the company right now. And I have a very, very negative opinion of them. So that's probably putting a lot of bias in me right now. But at the same time, too, like we're talking one of the major publishers now wanting to get into the free to play market. And every time a major publisher gets into the free to play market, it's generally not great. I know every Call of Duty player under the sun is going to tell me there's nothing wrong with Warzone. But of course you're not. Every EA player is going to tell you whatever free to play game they've got going because I don't pay attention is going to tell you, oh, no, it's fine. That it's it's always going to be like that. If you're in the thick of it, you won't admit that there's something wrong. If you're on the outside like me, you see what's going on and you're going, I don't like how this is going. Well, what about something like, because I'm, I'm thinking about it, and like we already have a sort of AAA free-to-play game, and that's Fortnite. In the sense that like... Yeah, you know, I personally don't funded. like it. But I, I, is think, it you I think they is do it that you have don't like boxes. the game or you don't like the, that you don't like the business model? I think, well, if they still have loot boxes, that is a pretty big part of it. I'd have to double check on that because I'm not I'm not nearly as familiar as I used to be with it. But like, here's my question is like, does something like Warzone or Fortnite where it's free to get in, but you're paying for seasons like does that? Oh, so like, they never had use, it. OK, so no. Is that a, is that a free free to play game to you then? Like something like Warzone or, or 
Fortnite where the game is free to get into, but you're paying for seasons. No, but at the same, t- I don't know. Like, I guess I'm still, it's, it's like the games as a service thing, right? Too. Like your mm-hmm. guard just gets up because you don't like the history of things that, that go with it. Mm-hmm. I don't know though. So, I, I guess it, it my other thing like- too, because I mean like, any any of the games that I've played that use that kind of model, generally speaking, have also cost you a little bit of money because, you know, at least there's a bit of an investment right off the bat. Whereas I find with the free to play games, they do like they do a lot more in terms of, like you said, the season stuff because they need to get as much more money as they can they can milk out of you. And that's where my brain goes too. It's like I don't want like there's a reason I like Fall Guys, what they're doing right now. It's because, well, A, the seasons don't cost you any money. And then B, they're they're pretty well spread out, so you don't feel like you're gonna miss out on stuff. Whereas I feel like a, with a lot the of these games, the difference with the difference is Fall Guys though is that Fall Guys is a paid game. It's not a free to play game. Yeah, but it's not expensive either. No, but still technically not free. Like I imagine, I like I don't know what the pricing is for like say like buying the full season of a, of a Fortnite game, but I can't imagine it's like five bucks. Mm-hmm. I don't I, I don't know what the price is either. Like I'm not into this, but like. Look, there, there's a we, part of me that's like, I'm not nearly as invested, so maybe I'm, a, I'm talking a little bit out of my ass here on this, but at the same time, too, like like I said earlier, sorry. I don't like Ubisoft right now, so I guess just me hearing them going into the market that we know companies milk whales for, and we have mm-hmm. seen literal, like, um, what's the term I'm looking for, like, press conferences where they tell people how to mm-hmm. fuck with your customers like this. When I think of a company that I currently don't have a positive opinion of, doing these kinds of games makes me think these are the kinds of conversations they're going to be having in that office thinking, okay, how can we milk as much money out of our customers that are really into these games that we put them in? It's just that that's how it is with me. That's the one worry that goes through my head. Like, again, if this was some small time developer that I've never heard of, then I kind of understand why they want to do that because Lord knows they probably don't have any money, but Ubisoft has a lot of money to work with. So when I see them doing this, this kind of stuff, I'm thinking, I don't think you guys need the money, so this tells me this is pure greed. And given how the company's been acting recently, I only see greed with this company. So, no, I, I, I thinking about the the Fortnite situation, like I think that's what we're gonna kind of see is like these seasons, and like yeah, you can get in and play the game for free, but then if you want to be sort of part of that community and part of that you know experience, and yes, there are seasons with additional content that you can get into, but I think it's I, I think the definition of free to play and how we understand it is changing in that we think of free to play as those mobile games where it's, you know, got all the coins and, you know, can, you can buy, you know, $99 worth of gems to play. more. Also, I have a bad taste in my mouth. Cause the last time I remember Ubisoft really getting into the stuff was when they did the mighty quest for Epic loot. And that was literally predatory in, in the name, in every point. Yeah. So they have a history of doing it. So I think it's just like, past biases kind of creeping up on me which i can admit right so yeah no that's fair i i definitely like i can see why you why you're skeptical and i don't, and i think there's a a case for it to be made to be skeptical also i don't but want to I dig think... deep into it but the fact that it's not like there is a lot of word going around that they really haven't done anything since or harassment uh allegations that were being brought out really mm-hmm. tells me that i don't trust this company having a very good uh outlook on things when they can't even get their own shit in order in, in the office you know yeah Fair enough. Like, we'll have to see what happens. I'm optimistic. I think we've seen some examples of, you know, free to play recently coming out well, but I can see why there's some skepticism. It's okay. I'll accept being the pessimist on the show. If that's my job, I'll do my job with the best of my ability. <laughs> You're doing a fantastic I'm job. I'm optimistically pessimistic. How's that? No, I think it comes back and forth. <laughs> I think, I think we, we alternate depending on the story and then depending on the, uh, the topic. But yeah. Um, the other thing that really came out this week is uh, Sony working. Um, Sony announced that they're working on 25 new games for the PlayStation 5, half of which are new IP. Uh, so this comes from Emma Kent at Eurogamer. Uh, she writes, uh, well, it sure sounds like so- Sony PlayStation Studios has been be- uh, beavering away creating first party games for the PlayStation 5. As an interview has revealed, Sony currently has 25 PS5 titles in the works, half of which are new IPs. Speaking to Wired, Gorilla co-founder Herman Hulse shared the numbers and said there's an incredible amount of uh, variety originating from different regions in the pipeline with a mixture of big, small, and different games. Um, honestly, not much news here. And like Sony's making games to PS5. I know what a shocker. I thought for fun that what we could do is kind of let's make a, a a wish list, Adam. So you're sitting there, you're you're at the desk. Publishers are coming in saying what we're working on. 
what are you hoping to hear? What what would you like? So give me let's let's do three each. What would be some of your top three things that you would like to see come out of? Well, given Sony how much of a failure uh, Destruction All Stars is, I think we I think we're due for a twisted metal game. Okay. I think yeah, I think we're more than due for for a good twisted metal run. Okay. Uh, who would you? What would you like? What would that look like? What would you want it to look like? Uh, like are we looking at like a remaster or are you looking for something no brand no, no. New? i want i want full-on redo okay so like brand new game yep okay fair enough you could even give it to the guys that did destruction all-stars because i think they made a pretty good game they just didn't make a very good uh ecosystem around it yeah like in all honesty it looks like they really just wanted to make a twist of metal game but they tried to put seasons around it like it was a free-to-play game and i'm like guys that that doesn't work yeah, like a destruction derby game only has so many legs. Like, I, like I said, if they had put races in this thing too with that system, maybe it could have worked. But because it's literally just arenas, that gets old really quick. It's not. There's not nearly as much of a complexity as say, like, I got. We just talked about you know how much I hate these games, I guess. But uh, Fortnite and all and Apex and all these games, like, there's still enough of a complexity there that you can get something out of it. Whereas, like, I've played Destruction All Stars enough to know that. Yeah, this game doesn't have legs if you're trying to play a battle royale system to it. It just doesn't work. So if you want to make that, make Twisted Metal, make it like this really well like put together $40 game and just go ham on its multiplayer, focus on that and just do what you can with that. Stop trying to make like this game changer. Just make a damn good Twisted Metal game. And people will come yeah. and play that. Yeah. I I think that's a that's a really good point. Um and it's a very niche market that isn't really served super well right now. So I think having that in there would be good and be a callback to the, the previous fans. 100%. Um, for me, one thing I'd like to see is being a huge Last of Us fan. I want to see a Last of Us game, but I don't want the Joel and Ellie story. I'd like to just see more stories in that world. Um, whether it's, you know, a game that focuses on like what happened in Outbreak Day um and just seeing it fall apart like i find a lot of these post apocalyptic games like days gone um you know fallout you know any of these post apocalyptic games it's always you know 2 years 5 years whatever years later and i kind of want to just play a game where it's like the last of us but it's as things are falling apart and going to shit so like the day after the intro of last of us part 1 like, that's what I'd like to see. And not not necessarily Naughty Dog, but I'd like to kind of see that world explored and more stories with new characters that have nothing to do with um, with Ellie. Even, like, have something explore, like, another part of the world. Because, like, as I understand it, the whole world has gone to shit. It's not just the U.S. Yeah. So, for me, that's something I'd like to see. Uh, the next one, I'm going a little... Like, I got the one that I want. Now I want the stuff that's, like, going to be more beneficial. So... <laughs> The second one is I want them to do a SOCOM game. Not because I would play it, but because it is insane to me that Sony doesn't that hasn't put their their like touch on a military shooter. Mm -hmm. Cause like that's that's where the market is. And like especially when like you've seen like obviously what Warzone's doing, but you also have games like Rainbow Six Siege that have become this extremely popular game. And for Sony to sit there and be like, well, eh, let's not do anything with that. When like SOCOM would just come out fresh. Like you don't even have to like a lot of people probably won't even know what the title is, but you still put that out there and you make it look damn good, make it look mm -hmm. damn realistic, and it's got the Sony brand to it. I don't know who would be the one producing it, but you put the Sony first-party brand on it, that gets people's attention. They're thinking, ooh, uh, a sh a, like a military shooter with Sony's brand on it? Ooh, I w I'd love to see what they do with it. Especially because I know a lot of people are going to want them to probably stick to like what's... I think SOCOM was mostly third person that does have like some first person to it. Yeah, Stick to first person. I'm just going to say it. I don't think tactical shooters work nearly as well in third person compared to first because it's it's better to have like the bird's eye view. Yeah, so that was going to be my third option that I was going to bring up. But like, I think Sony needs a first person shooter. And I don't not, know what not that because looks like. we want them, but I think it makes sense for them to have their name in that conversation. If you look at the catalog um, for PlayStation, like especially like a single player shooter i think would like work well like i don't think we need a, a multiplayer online shooter because you have like that market's pretty covered in terms if of... they wanted to be ballsy and make a first like a single player only sh first person shoot like military shooter that'd be pretty impressive because it would be something interesting for once 
Yeah, I, I like think... if you're talking like an epic Call of Duty campaign level kind of game. Yeah, I'd be super into that. Well, I think like because if you think about it, like that's where I think they would shine because the only ones that are doing something like that as well is um, is it Machine Games that does Wolfenstein? I can't remember what the I, think I it's mean Mich- it's Bethesda, I think it's but it's Bethesda. But like with them now going to Xbox, like xbox has that market now like the only real first person shooters that playstation has i mean it would be pretty crazy for them to have like a last of us level story attached to a first person shooter you know yeah and to have that like like, level of realism and like seriousness to it that all that apparently sony's just really got on the ball right now yeah so i don't know what it looks like whether it's a historical kind of like you know do like the vietnam war or something like that like do a story in vietnam as a first person shooter or if you do something futuristic or even just like a modern military shooter like it doesn't even have to be like military shooter but just having a first person shooter game is is something that i think sony is lacking with resistance gone with kill zone kind of dormant um and but that's a kind of walking away with its first person shooters like i think that's a, a market that playstation is lacking but i think it has the skill like when you think of playstation you think of great single player stories and i think if you take that with a genre that's kind of underrepresented i think that would be something that works out really well yeah so i mean I it, goes, it the... goes both ways like they can do like just another multiplayer shooter that just does really really well on playstation like that works still works fine for them if they want to go the single player route, i'm not going to complain either i just i want them to have that that you know i want them to put that their own version in the ring because i think it's kind of it's it's a little bit weird to see like microsoft basically have all of it for the most part mm-hmm. Yeah, like there's, I don't, I can't think of one PlayStation exclusive. Like you'd have to go to Resistance shooter. or Kill Zone, but let's be completely honest. Like done. Those like games done right are no, they're like nobody wants them anymore. Like the very few nobody that are, wants them. Well, but I mean, like we're talking the hardcore people. Like mm-hmm. I don't think the casual gamer is going to be really excited if a new Kill Zone gets announced. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like kill, like the Kill Zone trailer at an E3 press conference isn't going to make most people go, oh. Yeah, I'm not saying like, if SOCOM would either, but you need something different. Like you need a license that a lot of people haven't either haven't heard of or just make a new IP, I guess. Because I mean, mm-hmm. I said SOCOM is the example, but even if it's just a new IP, but like, what if you did? What sorry, if go you ahead. did Order 1886 as a first person shooter? No, no, no. I'm did talking. You're... I want the military because I want. Oh, okay. I want them to get to get in that same conversation. I want them to to give you Call of Duty and your battlefields and and your stuff like that a run for its money or at least like say like hey guys like you got you guys have tried the campaigns also rumor is battlefield 6 won't even have a single player campaign Mm -hmm. so that's interesting it would be nice for sony to be like look we're the kings of single player experiences call of duty you guys think you can do good with this let the real pros show you what a what a good first person shooter story looks like i'd love that yeah that'd be cool i think i'd want to have something a little bit more original like like one of the cool things about order 1886 is like the setting was really cool the story was like had a good premise. I don't think it executed well, but the guns were super cool. Like the thermite gun was awesome. Um, and like, the, it's a cool world. And I think if you had like, imagine having like a 19th century shooter where like you have like these, you know, Tesla based kind of like weapons and stuff like it should sure. be really cool. But it also would be a real slap in the face to a lot of people. If you make like a really damn good military story, like yeah, one that 100%. even like people who are very ardent against military shooters would mm-hmm. even go, okay, no, this story did really good. Like, especially if it was a historical one where you really can't argue it. Yeah, I'd almost say like if you I, I that, would, like, I don't know if I want like a present day like modern warfare stuff. Like, it would probably be pretty cool if they had like a really solid ass World War II shooter or something. Yeah, that or like I think I think if you want like a really cool sort of like heartfelt story, like Vietnam would be another one where it's like you. There's a lot of interesting. You know, There's a lot of ways to go with it. Basically, I just want them to do a really damn good first person shooter, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. That that was my that was my third choice, but I just thought I'd bring that up now. But yeah, I think that they need some sort of first person shooter regardless of what that looks like. That isn't kills on um, a resistance cuz I think that ship is sailed. See, I don't know. I think if you brought it back, like if you started like They drop, might be able drop. to make it good, but I don't I don't think it's going to carry necessarily the same like excitement with people. It might be a game that flies under the radar cuz most people are just done with it. I think if you started it as like a reboot of the franchise, so don't don't remaster, don't remake those games, but just kind of say like we're taking the pre- we're taking the concept, especially of of Killzone, because Killzone has a really cool aesthetic. We're taking the concept of of Killzone. We're going to start it fresh. We're going to start it from scratch. It's a brand. Well, new, we're like, also we're also talking sci-fi though. I think I'm still trying to keep it dick grounded to like real reality a bit. 
Like you, you're asking for the Order 1886 level shit. I'm like, man, pop in a damn good realistic game just so we can shove it in, in people's faces because it's always yeah. Call of Duty or Battlefield. That's all it's been. I know yeah. there's the one beta that's on PlayStation right now The enlist that's enlisted, and mm-hmm. I've heard good things about that. So I, I just want to see somebody else put their name in the hat that actually gives them a run for their money because it's tiring seeing the same two names all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Um, so my last one, I, I think going back to Bethesda and what they're missing, I'd like to see Sony do a cyber, like not cyberpunk, but like a CD project red esque, like RPG. So in depth, deep RPG mechanics where, you know, it's not like, cause I'm thinking of it, like, it's not something that Sony really has. Like if you think of like the RPG mechanics, it's like the closest they have is ghost of Tsushima. And I would not argue that ghost of Tsushima is a role playing game. So, you know, have one like a Bioware or a CD Projekt Red, like deep character building, multiple endings, kind of interwoven story. And like so something akin setting. to more like a Dragon Age Mass Effect kind of type, like a Dragon like a, Age Mass Effect, like a big Witcher. character developing, like choose your own adventure kind of game. Yeah, because once again, I feel like I feel like with Microsoft buying Bethesda like that is another huge blow for Sony because they don't have that now. Yeah. And so I think Sony's running the risk of being, you know, a one trick pony in the sense of single player third person action games which i totally get um they're good at it but i think that that's something that they're missing i mean they they you know what i'll agree with you sony go out there and make mass effect look like shit do it for me (laughs) do it for me (laughs) all all your options are just out of spite i mean yeah do you blame me (laughs) no that's true i mean sure like bioware might come back with its next mass effect thing that's supposed to like be a a sequel to the trilogy and it might be good again but i don't trust them so uh sony i trust you you guys do something do something cool with it show us what a real space space exploration rpg would look like yeah you know what go to sega say buy you know what buy sega and take fantasy star and and make like a really badass like like space fantasy star rpg game not an online game because as much as i like pso2 i don't care anymore make me a damn good single player fantasy star game let's go have fun Fuck you, Bethesda. You're going to take Starfield? I'll make my own Starfield. Fantasy <laughs> Starfield. Done. Yeah. We'll make our own. The the other, the only other genre I'd, I'd like to see Sony explore is, and, and this is like four. I'm kind of cheating a little bit. And if you have a bonus one, feel free to throw it out. Um, I'd like to see them go into the stealth realm. I, I, I feel like... So like a, something like going back to Siphon Filter, maybe? Siphon Filter, Splinter Cell, Metal Gear Solid. Like, well, I mean, again, like of their to... licenses, Siphon Filter would be the one that comes. I'm along, not even right? saying it has to be Siphon Filter. I'm just saying I feel like that's a genre that's under, under like explored right now. It's not. It's not really. We're not seeing a lot of games out of it. Like, I think the only one that I really can think of is Hitman, and it so, did really so are well. You, are you looking for something akin to like a military aspect to it, or does it, or do you just want like a really good stealth game? Because they could also go something in the direction of like Thief, for example. Yeah, I, I see for me, that's where I fall. Like, I like a little bit more of like the modern day stealth as opposed to thief esque. I think it could be cool, but thief just never jived with me. But I would definitely be down for seeing like a stealth game where you're where stealth is focused as opposed to going gun blazing. So once again, do something really cool. Make it like, you know, a fantasy sort of stealth game or something like that. But just so so we'll, so Sony should just call up Kojima and we'll be like, all right, we got an idea for you. Let's try to make a steel cog uh, harden. OK, let's do that and let's go. <laughs> First of all, you do not call Kojima with ideas. He calls you with the ideas. That is true. <laughs> no one gives ideas to Kojima. So, OK, Adam, fine. Uh, you just you just bring up the bring truck to Kojima and be like, look. Just give us anything that just, just, okay, no, you you back up the Brinks trucks to Kojima and just with a note that just says, make us something that will piss off Konami. Make, you just, you just back it up to Kojima and you say, make it happen. <laughs> no, 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 give him a little, give him a little, give him that little, like, write, write, basically, write you, write us a fuck Konami game. <laughs> like, just do that, just to give him a little bit of an extra incentive. Your whole the whole game is just breaking into Kojima's office or uh, breaking into uh, Konami's office. Just that's the stealth the element. Office. He's stealing yeah. his property back. It's just it's just yeah. a game of Kojima sneaking in the offices trying to find all the uh, all the the contracts of the license. Some guy like some guy working at Konami's playing at home. He's like, wait, no. Really- Level one is the patent office. And you work your way <laughs> into the Konami headquarters as like the he's final just, one. Some guy at Konami's just playing. He's like, this is real like one to one. You know 
built of of like what it is at Konami, and he's like, "Holy crap, Kojima's just training people to come and infiltrate our office." Yep, exactly. <laughs> uh, Adam, I kind of went ahead and I kind of dropped an extra one. Do you have any other? games that you want to see well, the, anything on your wish list okay well i'll give you the other one that i was going to do business wise and then i'll pull out one that i'm just like all right please do this for me um okay. i'm pretty sure it's going to happen but there better be an uncharted game with nathan's daughter like yeah. we, it needs to happen and i know a lot of people are probably sitting there being like yeah but uncharted's got a real good spot to end on i'm like guys i'm just gonna say it for the sake of getting not not even not not even money for the sake of of making this the most welcoming industry to have just one more defining female main character just to cap it off with what we have with her, Ellie, Aloy, etc. Just in Sony alone, that is the cherry on top. Uncharted 5 you know would be one of the best, if not the best game that year. And it would be the last little bits just to prove to people it's like, look, this is what history, this is what the future is going to look like for gaming. This is for everybody now. Let's go. Let's see. Let's just, let's see how deep this rabbit hole goes. So oh, it's, I just I, a- I'm looking at Uncharted 5 more as an important to the, to the culture of this community kind of thing. So I was just thinking like, what would that look like? And I was like, oh no, like, cause what I would like to, if I was making Uncharted, I'd almost want to see a young, like, I, I'd almost want to see like a young Sully Uncharted game. But then I'm like, wait, what if we had this situation where it was uncharted with Nate's daughter, something happened, you know, Elena and Nate um, go missing. And so the daughter has to kind of pick up the, pick up the, you know, whatever the hell it is. You can do both in one game. You can have flashbacks. It's not hard, Mm -hmm. but no, think about it. If you have like their daughter pairing up with Sully to go and find him. And Sully's like way too old for this. And so he's just kind of like mentoring her and just on the walkie talkie, just giving him wisecrack. Uh, and she's out there doing it. But then you run into the problem that Nate has is that is his daughter going to become a serial murderer like he is? I mean, yeah. <laughs> All right. Like, on, why can't she? You're trying I, to say that women can't become serial killers in video games like he can? Come on. That's. <laughs> that is not what I'm saying, sir. You're twisting <laughs> my words. <laughs> but, like, you, you could even have it that, like, she's, like, on her first real mission and she's trying to learn a lot of stuff, and Sully's, like, telling her like yeah like here here's a few tips and it gets and this is where you have flashbacks to like young sully doing stuff like you can mm-hmm. do stuff like that to make it work yeah you know what? i'm I, we're, we're selling this game to me i'm definitely down for this and like you don't have to have him go up against like a paramilitary like that's the thing he always ends up going up against like yeah a it doesn't have thing. to be a shooting gallery you can actually have a little more emphasis on the exploration for a little while and he actually you know what you can even make most of the game not shooting for her until the very end because you remember like the original assassin's creed game before desmond finally broke out and fought for real the first time Mm. or it might not have been one it might have even been two 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 is the one where he did the first you could literally have the entirety of uncharted be all of her sections are just exploration and maybe escaping from people like (laughs) try like trying not to die and then the very end of the game is her having to shoot for the first time like maybe yeah. to save her parents, she has to actually shoot somebody for the first time. And you could make all the crazy action like shooting sections Sully flashbacks. Yeah. No, I'm loving this. This is awesome. Okay, so Adam, what's your last one? What is for uh, my own for my own happiness, I want a new buzz quiz game. I miss those fucking PS2 quiz games. Those were fucking amazing. Honestly, it, it would be such a good thing to have like I miss the buzzers. That was the best part about them. You know what? There was a missed opportunity that they did not come out with this game really quickly during the pandemic. Could you imagine if they had done like oh, a buzz quiz like show on PlayStation where you could just play randomly online with people? Like there's a lot of cool things. Like you could even do like online stuff, like have online matches where you like you could actually have like game show. Do you remember what Xbox 360 used to do with one versus 100? Yes. Do that with buzz. Yeah. Well, the like fact literally that every have- Wednesday night or something you have like say a three hour block or even you can do it every fucking day on Twitch. Like that would be a mm-hmm. great way to get people to watch your game. Be like, Hey guys, we pulled up a, a, a new show. Here we are. So it's going to be like a half hour show. So we're going to get four random people that we pull out or whether it's like, maybe they win some online tournaments to kind of mm-hmm. get themselves into the, into a draw and you have a live game show, like a live video game show. Like that would be really cool. Mm-hmm. But I, I, well, I literally just want the buzzers again. That was my favorite like party game for a long time. Cause I'm a big trivia guy. I love fucking trivia. Oh, games. Dude, me too. We should do like, we need to do a trivia night one night. Yeah. Um, but no, I think, I think that's a, 
especially because like the way it's now like play linked up with your phone like um it would also be a cool that... idea coming out of the pandemic to really get people like to like their first big things to do together yeah because i know we play one it's um oh what the hell is it called oh, it's like this one I, I forget it's basically like um j- like you don't know jack or whatever and it's just your friends and like who's the most likely to say this response or like who's the most likely to like you know have toilet paper on their foot after leaving the bathroom like and we just use our phones and now imagine if you just did a trivia game with that like where i could have because that's the thing you know, I, I would want the buzzers if i had the choice but you can easily do that with a phone it's no yeah, problem i mean you can have that you can sell the periphery if you want to but yeah i think i think i think a game buzz kind of quiz show would be awesome awesome As, and, and, right. and the best part is they'd be wireless because exactly. lord knows it's extremely easy to trip over the cords in the ps2 version oh my god <laughs> no i think that's awesome i think that's actually a pretty good collection there um yeah you know if you guys are listening at home let us know what you guys would like to see is there a particular franchise you want to come back a genre um a project you want someone to be working on if you're watching us on youtube leave a comment uh if you want to email us you can email us as well I'm, i'd be happy to read some of the suggestions online uh if you want to email us you can email us at the pixel play podcast at gmail.com or if you're watching us on YouTube, just leave the comments down below. And uh, yeah, if we get any suggestions, we'll we'll read them next week just to share what some of the other ideas that come across our yeah. desk are. Awesome. But we we um, all know it's mostly going to be just bashing me. I I know. I know. <laughs> you know, it's the cross that you bear on the team. So Look, it's if uh, it's a burden I have to take. I'll take it in the interest of views, okay? You, you got the big shoulders. I appreciate it. Adam, that about wraps up the show. Is there any sort of closing thoughts or anything you want to kind of finish off with before we go? Halo Infinite's in trouble. There we go. Let's get those (laughs) fires burning again. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this has been episode 18 of the Pixel Play podcast. Uh, If you've been listening to us for a while, if you're one of our regulars, you know, thank you. We love you. We appreciate you guys. Uh, I I tell Adam, I I watch the metrics all the time and I see you guys watching us and I really appreciate it. Uh, If you if this is your first time with us, you know, hope it was good for you. Hope to see you again next week. Uh, if you want to engage with us, we are on Twitter at Pixel Playcast. We're also on Instagram at Pixel Playcast. You could find us on Spotify, Google Play, Apple, wherever you want to find us for a podcast. Just look Pixel Play Podcast. Um, we are also on YouTube at the Pixel Play Podcast. So check us out there. Um, and like I said, if you want to email us topics for the show, if you want to just comment on something that we've said, uh, you can email us at pixelplaypodcast at gmail.com. Uh, one thing for note uh next not next week but the following week june 1st uh we're gonna be doing our episode live uh we have a tendency apparently to be doing our episodes live uh every 10th episode so june 1st is gonna be episode 20 for us so we're gonna be hosting it live uh i don't if know discord if discussed... allows it if discord allows it um we haven't discussed whether we're gonna start our own little twitch channel for this or if we're gonna use yours adam we can give more details next week but Keep an ear out because it's June 1st, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll go live and you guys can watch us be part of the show, submit questions, anything you guys want to do there. Um, Adam, anything else I'm missing? Uh, like this shit. Yeah. yeah Share you know, it. If, Let everybody yeah. know. Especially yeah. tell them, like, you got to watch this podcast with this dumbass guy who just constantly says all the wrong stuff. Look, I'm and cool. This is the guy that wears glasses too, so. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, if, if you guys like what you hear, we would really appreciate if you shared it out with your friends, your family. You know, grandma's sitting at home. She's not doing anything right now. She's probably lonely. She's not having friends over. Yeah, she's get us over play... with the 79 crowd. I mean, yeah. Why you know, not? grandma's at home. She's not playing bridge. She's lonely. So, you know, she doesn't have anyone to talk to. You can put this on the background. You know, if your dog, if you're leaving your dog at home, like if you want to make it sound like there's people there, like play the podcast in the background. We don't care. You know, everyone would enjoy this. So, Come home. Yeah. The dog shit all over the carpet because he just got he just got so angry. He said, "What about Halo?" Exactly. <laughs> maybe, maybe we're maybe we're giving some bad advice here. You know what? Don't show it to your dog. Maybe grandma, but not maybe not the dog. You know, put it in the background, and she'll think there's people there. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you, and we will see you guys next week. Bye for now. <laughs>